Hey everyone, testing out a new product today. Um, this comes from Magna Colors and it is their super white and uh, also discharge base uh, low odor. So the low odor is new. Of course, they've done discharge for many years now and have very good product. But this is the low odor, so I'm testing this out for the first time. Um, of course, each of those bases comes separately and it also uh, you have to get the activator with it which is uh, ZFS which is the common activator in any discharge so um, well let's just dive into that a little bit so if you haven't printed with discharge at all I'll kind of walk you through a little bit of that and then I'll also kind of give you my comments on what I see or what I see that's a little bit unique uh, with with the product so First things first, and I had a photo of it up there at the beginning, but I basically, I took some of the base out of each and I put it in their own mixing containers and then I added 6% activator to it, which is the ZFS, it's powder. Um, and 6% is the highest level that they have you use. So whenever I'm starting out testing out a discharge, I put the highest level first. If I don't like it or it's too bright, you can always scale that back and adjust that as you want, but I want to test out straight out of the gate the most powerful product of it that I can. So I start with the highest end of the activator, 6%, and I've got them each in containers like this. And you can see I have it uh, labeled with what it is. But more importantly, when you're running water-based ink and stuff like this that has an activator and it has a shelf life, the TDS on this particular product says it will last about eight hours once it's activated. I can't verify that, I've not tested it yet. But either way, it has a shelf life, a pot life. Um, so when you're doing these, my good buddy Carlton that I used to work with, uh, he taught me this little trick and I've done it ever since. You know, Make sure when you mix it up and you activate it, you put the date on and also the time of when you activated that. So that is now active, it's ready to go. So I mixed that in and I did that now it was probably almost three hours ago and it's just set because I want to make sure those dry crystals that you're putting in there to activate it I want to make sure that really dissolves and gets incorporated in it now as well once I go to use it I will also mix it up again to make sure everything is is fully mixed and you know we're, we're have no separation anything like that so you know make sure you put that stuff in a little bit early to make sure it dissolves really well but then also mix it up and keep mixing it as you go so that's what we have. We have the discharge base and the super white. Now basically what I'm gonna be doing, I just got a one color job that I have thrown on press. Um, this is a 230 mesh, uh, so it's a bit high or on the higher end of things for discharge. Once again, I wanna really put this stuff through its paces and see what it'll do. Depending on how it comes out, you know, I know I can always get a little bit better coverage or put more down to discharge more with a 156, but I wanna start with the 230 is a bit more of a detailed job and I just want to see just how well it performs. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. The first one I'll be using just the discharge base. The second one I'll be doing the super white. Um, the discharge you know generally is like a, a tannish cream color kind of natural color and then we'll see how bright white and super white is. Um, now first one mixing these up the first observations I had in general um, when you open each of the bases, they do have very, very little odor. In fact, I didn't notice any smell at all with just the base. The Super White, there was a little bit of a sweet aroma with it, but not overpowering the way most Discharge products are. Um, now certainly, when I, as soon as I cracked open the ZFS, the activator, there was that sulfur smell. Boom, that was very quick. You know, and you still notice that, that was definitely there. But as soon as I mixed it in and got it in there, that went away. So there's like no odor right now. And I have them in good uh, airtight containers. So right now, you know, there's no odor and smell. Now typically, if you're used to printing a lot of discharge, you know, you're used to that just horrible discharge smell that kind of permeates everything when you're running it. So that was my first observations, um, first of all. And, you know, we'll get the true test of it once we start printing and sending it down the dryer. So those uh, couple of things are just the beginner things, the things to keep in mind. Um, the base was fairly runny, like a normal, typical water-based base would be. Um, the super white, 
certainly had more body to it than just the face. So that was uh, just something to note, and something that I, I saw initially before trying it out. So yeah, we're gonna put in a 230 screen, just a regular uh, 70 duro single durometer squeegee, nothing special. Currently, I have the dryer set at 330, which is what the, uh, or 340, I should say, which is what the technical data sheet recommends. Also, I've turned my belt speed down quite a bit. So this is gonna be a bit of a test first to see how well it works, but this is where I typically run discharge. We have a four panel dryer here, and it is set right now. The chamber time is about a minute, five seconds in the tunnel. So, um, which for us is a fairly slow speed, um, but you'll definitely wanna test that on your own. If your discharge isn't activating, you know, slow that down or bump your temp a little bit to start to see if it activates. Uh, something else you'll probably notice once we start printing is that um, these probably will look like they're barely there even though I've printed them. And then we'll send them through the dryer. Once that heat activates it, that's when we'll see the real results. Um, so if it looks like I'm not really printing anything, I am. So um, I'm gonna do a couple test prints on just some random shirts we have to start just to open up the screen once or twice you'll see me uh, pull flood every time to make sure we got a good thick flood and then it'll just be one hit, that's it. Um, each ink, I'm gonna do four shirts on though. That's gonna be our, our real ones. And what they are is I have a rust colored 100% cotton Bella canvas shirt. I have a black 100% cotton Bella canvas shirt. I have a black 100% cotton anvil shirt. And I have a uh, space black all made tri blend. Typically, all made tri blends actually do discharge pretty well even though they're not 100% cotton. So we're gonna test all four of those on each see what happens uh come back to you guys once we send them through the dryer we will uh see how they activate and then i will get back to you guys and get some comments on how that goes so something i want to know anytime you're running any kind of discharge and and really on some level this is more important with any water bases in general because of what's in them you know all inks that we use are industrial inks and should be handled cautiously and safely uh, specifically with discharge though there are some some stronger chemistry in them that we don't necessarily want to be getting into our bodies um, and specifically with this stuff we don't want to be breathing it in so anytime you're running discharge make sure you have some kind of cross ventilation going on in your shop so you need to either have air movement or have the doors open a little bit or have exhaust fans going just so you have some cross uh, ventilation and, and you don't have that air where you're just sitting in this enclosed space all day sucking in these fumes. You want these fumes to get uh, ventilated quickly and get away from you that way your body and your lungs aren't absorbing them and that goes for really every ink should be this way um, but specifically with these it, I want to preface that even more you know and be even more clear that you should always do that with discharge inks. Um, even, even these that don't have strong odor, it doesn't matter. You still, whether you can smell it or not, you don't wanna be uh, breathing in those vapors. So always make sure you cross ventilate when you're running discharging's. Okay, so a couple of really quick observations just from printing these. Um, first of all, there's almost no odor in the shop after running those through the dryer. Um, and that is wonderful, because if you've ran a lot of discharge, 
uh, you know that smell is obnoxious to say the least. Um, so that part is awesome. I even stepped outside and came back in to make sure, you know, I wasn't losing my mind or anything to make sure that that was a good representation. Um, one thing I noticed for sure was screen open time for a water base sink was very good. I added no retarders or anything like that. I added no additives. That is just straight out of the bucket with activator in it. Nothing else because I wanted to really put it truly through its paces. Uh, so that was something to notice really well. I didn't have any problems with screens drying up. And I've had that with other inks like that. If you don't add those additives to it, it, it uh, clogs up on you very quickly. That being said, everyone's environment's a little bit different, so you may have to adjust. But, but just from a user standpoint, that part was, was great. The other thing is, every single garment discharged, and actually discharged very well, including even these kind of funky like acid wash teas uh, we had, even that discharged great. With the base, which you'll notice is kind of a, a yellowish color, and even with the white, those discharged very well. Um, but all the garments did, to be honest. Um, you know, this very heavily red dyed shirt, you know, it, it discharged very well and came out very bright. Um, every single shirt is that way. There was not a single one that was a failure. Um, this is the Bella Canvas 100% cotton one with just the discharge base. That one came out very good. And then this is the all made even with just the base it discharged very good of course it has a bit more of a distressed look to it because it's just the cotton fibers in it in the tri-blend that are discharging but all of them came out great so i will get you some close-ups of these two um one thing you'll notice this is fairly common with discharging especially the newer ones that have come out these when i just feel them have little to no hand but just a little bit right now the white does have a lot more of a hand right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these all washed up, get them through a cycle of wash, that way any remaining um, particles on them from the print will be washed away. So it should be practically uh, hand-free or perfectly soft because now we're just touching um, essentially bleach fibers at that point. So I am gonna test that way and then I'll get you some close-ups of that as well. But overall, just from a usability standpoint, that was very easy, screen open time was great. That can sometimes be a nightmare. Um, I think this run wonderfully on an auto. In fact, I think it'll run even better than I did here just because you don't have the nuance of my hand uh, pressure being different from garment to garment. But other than that, I mean, ran very well. Like I said, dryer is on 340 and it's about a minute five dwell time. No issues, discharge rate. So I'll get some close ups and report back and give a final uh, grade on this product. Okay, all of these have now been through a wash. They, to the hand, they feel absolutely amazing. Um, there is no hand to them whatsoever. I mean, they are perfectly soft. So, on the left hand side, this is the discharge base. And on the right hand side, this is the white. Um, so you'll see some differences between the two. Obviously, this is a more natural or tan color, which is common out of a discharge base. Um, the ones at the top, these are all the Bella Canvas. This is the Anvil Cotton. And then this is the All Made Tri Blend. Um, and they all came out pretty good and they're very solid, you know, and then the tri-blend of course has a more heathered look to it because of the other fibers in it that are not cotton. But they all came out very well. Now something that is interesting, well I guess first of all, they came out well even in comparison to how the garments changed. They were very standard. I mean there is some variation between each garment, but they're actually pretty similar for in comparison to most discharge. If you've ran a lot of discharge, you see a lot of variations based off the garment because often it has more to do with the reaction of the ink with the garment dyes than the actual ink itself. So I think you could be very confident running large batches of discharge with this ink 
because of the consistency of it, as long as you have a good stable garment. So that part is really great. The other thing that's very interesting is this is a, a true white. This is a, just a white plastisol print that we have and putting that in comparison to it. Now the discharge white certainly isn't as white and as true of a white as that. It has a bit more of a cream color. Um, but overall for discharge, I mean, very good, very good. And, you know, I would feel very confident with the opacity of these under bases or as of this discharge base to use it as an under base as well. Like I think it would be a great uh, discharge under base if you do that method as well. So overall, they're very good and I'm very pleased with the results and how well they came out. Now, as far as grading it, you know, I would, as far as performance goes, they perform very well. This is as good as any discharge I've used. So performance is great. I would give that an A plus because it, it works as stated and works with very few inconsistencies. Now, as far as usability of it, I would give that a B plus. And that's simply because it is a discharge base. It's gonna be harder to train employees essentially on how to run this. There's a lot more to it between adding the activator, getting your temp settings right, uh, making sure you have the right additives in it so your screens don't clog up, things of that nature. So because of that, I'm going to give it a B plus. But that's not because this product actually is hard to use for a discharge product. It's more because discharge in general, if you're not used to it, your only plastisol printer does take a few extra steps. So overall, a very great product. I feel very confident in running this for very large runs, which to me is always what uh, matters most. Can you run 10, 20, 40,000 units for a national brand and get them to accept the consistencies of it without a chargeback? Um, and, and you very easily could with this, like very confident in saying that you could. The hand feel is great. There is no hand to it at this point. They are perfectly smooth prints. And honestly, these tri blends with the level of um, heathering they have in them, just by how it reacts with the garment, are really cool and give a really great effect as well. So some beautiful shirts, and I would highly recommend this if you have not gotten this yet and you would like to try it, you know, make sure you talk to your NASDAQ rep and get some of this in your hands and, and give it a try because it is a great product for discharge printing. And I think this would be a fairly easy product if you haven't done discharge printing yet to get your feet wet with it.